Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please make sure all cell phones are turned off at this time. All cell phones need to be turned off and put away. All cell phones need to be turned off and put away. All rise. Circuit Court in and for Pinellas County is now in session with the Honorable Patricia A. Mustarella, Circuit Court Judge presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. Judge, it's Andrew Keith on behalf of Julie Marshes in her official capacity as Pinellas County Supervisor of Election and Amanda Coffey in her official capacity as Managing Assistant County Attorney with the Pinellas County Attorney's Office. We're here for both of my clients' motions to strike in the case management conference as indicated. And Deputy Judge Matthew Wolf, on behalf of Mr. Rockford. Okay, I have a question before we get started. There's four statutes, 102.1685, and it's a venue statute, and um, it says for quite some time that any election that is more than one county is to be filed in Maine County. And I wanted some input from both of you on that statute before we get started. Ms. Perry? Just uh, 102.168 uh, 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 Section 5 actually says to be filed in the circuit court of the county where the election happens. So in this case, I filed a contest both in Pinellas and Hillsborough County. I understand that, but that doesn't comply with the statute. So I'd like a response. You, you filed in Hillsborough as well, but it doesn't just, it doesn't say whether you file in both counties. It says the election was in both counties. Just so any response? Yes, Judge, and I will note that we filed an answer and motion to dismiss on behalf of Amanda Coffey as hers was due yesterday, and that is a position we asserted in that motion. Um, our primary position, frankly, is that jurisdiction would lie with the U.S. House of Representatives under the U.S. Constitution. But if any circuit court were to have jurisdiction in Florida, it would be Leon County. We're not in dispute that this election covered both Pinellas and Hillsborough counties. It's very clear under 102.1685, as Your Honor indicated, if there's venue anywhere in Florida, it's Leon County. So you would um, read the statute in any supporting case law that it would be in could be some other court, but it could, the only one that it prescribes in Florida law is Leon County, correct? Absolutely, Judge, for the race that's contested, yes. Ms. Perry. Judge, uh, the, his argument of it being either in the House or uh, also the Leon is actually more for the final uh, election. 
introduction of the candidate to the house, but for the primary election, it stays in the county that it was the court. I did check into that, and it clearly says once a candidate is elected to the house, that's when uh, it, it has to go to the house or, or to the main. But the primary has to stay in the county. That's not what the statute says. Yes, Judge. It, it does say if you read it uh, in the requirements of the house and the if you read the extension, it says. Uh, that once a candidate is elected to the House. I'm not arguing about the House. Yeah, but, but, but the I'm statute. I'm arguing about what the venue statute says for your race. I'm not arguing about it. I'm pointing it out. Let's say that. So let me read it to you. It says, the venue for contesting a nomination or election for the results of a referendum shall be in the county in which the contestant qualified or in the county in which the question was submitted for referendum, or if the election or referendum covered more than one county, then in Leon County. And it makes some sense because Hillsborough judge could decide something different than I would decide. Well, I would decide. I don't know. So it does make some sense procedurally for one County, Leon County, to decide multi county disputes. And it doesn't say whether you file in Hillsborough or not in Hillsborough, it just says if the election is more than one county, venue is in Leon County. And I can give you a copy of this if you'd like. Uh, okay, Your Honor, but in that case, I would. Uh, want you to transfer it to Leon County uh, rather than uh, you know, doing any other. I don't know that I can even transfer it. It's in the law and venue. I don't know that I can. I don't know what the law is on that. Maybe it's funny, but um, they're going to request a filing fee anyway, no matter what. So I don't know if I can even transfer it. Can I look into it for the Yes, I would like you to. That would be great. Um, um, and uh, uh, to make sure that with it. the court, I will reserve ruling on it until you file something with the opposing parties as well as uh, the court file. Uh, and uh, also, uh, if it can, okay, so you're going to, uh, so we'll wait on the, uh, until. So I, so I need you to let me know once you do your research on what your position is. And um, did, so I know, is there a motion to dismiss on that issue as well in both of these uh, defendants? Or only as to Amanda Coffey right now? Only as to Amanda Coffey, but only because her answer was due first. Mid the supervisor was served later. Her answer is not due until the 23rd. And while this motion to strike is pending, we did not intend to file an answer or motion to dismiss at that time. But I can assure you, it will state that basis okay. as well. Okay. Yes, I do have another objection uh, uh, to this motion to dismiss. Uh, well, okay, we can go on to the motion to dismiss. I'm happy to have you both argue it. Um, and then I can decide that I probably should reserve today because I don't know if I can even decide anything since I don't have jurisdiction at the moment, or maybe there's an argument I don't have jurisdiction. So I'm happy for both of you to argue your positions today. Thank Your you. Honor, because he did not file his motion to dismiss disputing the jurisdiction, within the 10 days uh, that they were served, the Amanda Coffey and uh, uh, Julie Marcus were served on uh, August uh, 29. Okay. And so their 10 days were actually up on September 8th. So the law at uh, one, uh, one, uh, 102.168 section six says that if they do not file a response within the 10 days, they do not have uh, 
any right to a hearing, and it is a no objection. In that case, your honor can can you unopposed take jurisdiction of the matter and enter at least an injunction to the results because. As we can see, Rocky Rockport did win by cheating. And Judge Mandy Hurd. Hold on one second. You, you can't say that. That's your allegation, right? Correct. Right. Right. But um, uh, so, allegedly won, won by uh, cheating. Thank you. So that would be a prejudice, and that at least an injunction be uh, entered uh, without any, uh, as unopposed to the contest, because uh, 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 any response, his motion to strike, his motion to dismiss, his answer should be stricken because they're beyond the 10 days. Your motion is denied. So, yes. Judge, I just want to correct some misrepresentation. The fact that it was made to this court has to serve us. This complaint was filed on August 29th. It was not served on either of my clients on that date. In fact, it wasn't served on Mandy Coffey until September 4th and then the supervisor on September 11th, based on the records I see before me. That's a misrepresentation of this court of fact here today, and I just want to be clear about that. So my answer for Ms. Coffey was timely, my motion to dismiss was timely, and my the, those same responses on behalf of Supervisor Marcus will be timely as well. And I would ask the court to rule on the motion to strike today, and my position is the court does have jurisdiction to handle this as it pertains to an order that was specifically issued in Pinellas County, does not reach the merits of her suit in any sense of the term as a preliminary issue based on her filing without authority. Okay. So, <coughs> let's move on to the motion to strike. Judge, first of all, this representation to the motion to strike is totally false. I have attached the docket, I have attached uh, the filing, uh, the uh, order was on an appellate court, uh, on a uh, landlord tenant case. Uh, the, there was a writ for surgery filed. Meanwhile, the plaintiff, and this case wasn't filed by me, I was a defendant in the case. So for, and it is clearly a violation of my civil rights and constitutional rights under Fifth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment, especially uh, because during the writ of surgery, the plaintiff settled and withdrew his request for this restriction. An agreed order of release was submitted. The settlement and the agreed order was then sent to the lower court to be ratified. At which time the writ was withdrawn. So they had a word privy to all this information. All these documents are on the docket. They're intentionally lying and misleading this court, and that's what they're doing in the election. And, and, and it just goes to the integrity of the government that, and that's the reason I'm running for this election, is... So I have the documents. I'm sure the other side has the documents. You're relying on the documents, correct? Yes. Okay. So, 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 the, so the order he's relying on was overruled and back in 2019 on 11 26. I've had subsequent, if you look at the docket, several pro se filings. And Judge Linda Allen, actually, there was a question once at, with the clerk of the circuit court, and Judge Linda Allen clearly told her that it did not apply to any other case. It was at that time to that case. And, and even in that case, it was overruled. Okay, so everything was filed that you want me to rely on, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Judge, I just want to note at the outset that Ms. Perry's argument demonstrates a severe lack of understanding for basic legal principles, as has been demonstrated throughout her litigation history. I attach the orders that she's suggesting overturn this court. First of all, the order itself, which I attached to the motion, doesn't say it applied only to that case. It's very clear that she was barred from filing suit within the Sixth Judicial Circuit, period. The case law I cited in the motion supports that as a sanction, particularly when the grounds were stated so succinctly in the order, citing 15 prior cases that she lost as a pro se plaintiff. 
The order is clear. It says what it says. And I even attached the appellate court orders to show that she filed a writ. She had the opportunity of review. She filed a notice of settlement and release, which the court, the Second District Court of Appeal, treated as a notice of voluntary dismissal with prejudice. That's an exhibit B in my motion. Yes. There was no relief granted on that. There was absolutely no relief granted on that 2019 sanctions order. The record is abundantly clear. Nothing she's filed can change that. Now, I do want to note her response essentially is just as frivolous as her complaint in this case. There's no basis there to conclude that this 2019 sanctions order was overruled. You heard it yourself, Judge. She's saying that the county court ratifying or this agreed order accepting the settlement agreement somehow overturns the Second District Court of Appeals order on that appeal order from the circuit court here. County courts below both the circuit court and the Second District. County court doesn't have jurisdiction to overrule orders from other courts. That's clear, again, basic legal principles. There's no genuine dispute raised in her response, Judge. Again, she relies on a release and an agreed order from the county court ratifying that release. We know how the Second District treated it. It did not impact that 2019 sanctions order in any case. So both Supervisor Marcus and Amanda Coffey have stated a sound basis to strike this complaint pursuant to that 2019 sanctions order and to end the needless expense of resources responding to this frivolous, unfounded suit. I've already had to spend a lot of time on behalf of Ms. Coffey. This should end here now pursuant to the motions in that order, Judge. There's no basis to do anything else. We'd ask not only that the court grant the motions, strike the complaint, prohibit any pro se filings further in this case, and reserve jurisdictions as to sanctions upon appropriate motion moving forward. And I will let the court know I do have a copy of the proposed order today, which I gave to Ms. Perry. She's had an opportunity to review it. I'd ask the court to execute that today, particularly because Supervisor Marcus's answer deadline is approaching and will require significant time and resources once again to respond to this case. Thank you. Your Honor, being an attorney, he knows that a district court, a appellate court, always has to demand or return the pleading to the county, to the lower court, to have a final order entered. And that's what happened. The appellate court, after they were notified of the settlement and the clerk of the appellate court agreed that they would accept the settlement and that I will have to withdraw the appeal. But before that, it has to go down back to the lower court for the lower court judge to ratify the settlement that there was no restriction on pro se filing. And that's why we had to wait for the ratification. And the appellate court did not just dismiss it. I filed a voluntary withdrawal based on the settlement. And that's what it said. Her voluntary withdrawal is being considered a dismissal. And that's why I attached the docket. It shows that the appellate court had abated the appeal pending the county court to ratify the order for which the writ of certiorari was on prohibition, which was clearly a violation of my civil rights. And so as an attorney, he knows that the appellate court has to send it to the lower court for the final order. But he's still trying to mislead you. Oh, we are not going to agree to what the system is. So basically. So your argument is that you did a settlement agreement. You went to the county court, settled your dispute. No, we went to the appellate court and told them that we are settling the writ of certiorari issue of pro se filing. Well, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. And I'm reading the appellate court decision. And it says. He says it's withdrawn. I'm sorry? The order that he put says that the appellate withdrew. And that's why it was being dismissed. And the withdrawal was based on the settlement that was sent 
Initially to the I understand what you're saying. Let me read board. you let me read you the order from the second DCA. Okay. The petitioner's stipulation of settlement and dismissal is treated as a notice of voluntary dismissal, which the court accepts. The petition for writ of certiorari is is dismissed. So what that means is they didn't decide whatever the writ of certiorari was. They dismissed your case. So there's no adjudication of whatever your writ asked for. And so, so it Mr. Was, no, what I was saying, but the, the restriction was already released by the order of the... Uh, Unfortunately, that's not how the law works. And so I am going to dismiss your case based on and require that you, any filings that you do in Pinellas County, it is required to have an attorney. So do you, do you outline, let me have that, um, if you don't mind. Judge, can you look at it? Yes, may I approach? Yes. And so this is not adjudication on the merits, and so that's why I am ordering, I think, hold on one second, let me read this. The judge, uh, the, the order that was overruled because of the settlement was the... The county court could not overrule anything. No, the judge, but that was before Ms. by Perry, the appellate court. You can't say the same thing over and over. It doesn't help, okay? I appreciate it, but hold on. Let me read this. I would object to this order. Okay. Judge, the, at this what time... What part do you object to? Uh, first of all, Your Honor, already declared that you didn't have jurisdiction on this matter. Secondly, uh, even if he has an objection that I need an attorney, uh, it still doesn't qualify for motion to strike. I should be given time to get an attorney. And uh, thirdly, I agree with that. Thirdly, his language is so demeaning uh, that I would not uh, want this court to enter the order that he's written. I agree that you have time to get an attorney. So can I read this? Sure. How long would you like to obtain your counsel? Good counsel. For a judge, about two weeks. Two weeks? That's fine. So could you add that to this order, please? Yes, I can, Judge. I did notice that the court mentioned possibly a desire to prohibit further filings in the Sixth Circuit. I have it written as for prohibiting in this case. Would you like me to modify that so it encompasses essentially what that prior order said as well. I think confirming that the prior order is still in effect is fine. Absolutely, Judge. We 
will add a provision permitting the prior orders in effect, and we will also add a provision that Miss Perry will have two weeks to obtain counsel. Yep, so what do I have to submit to say that the prior order is not in effect? I have no idea what you tried to ask me. Well, Judge, in that case, the, the order, you submitted everything that you wanted me to rely on. You said that. Yeah. And I've, I've uh, determined that that is not sufficient. So I'm going to sign this order with those revisions. Um, are you associated with this case by email so that you would get anything I sign um, and any notices? Uh, I'm on the e-service, but... Okay, perfect. So you'll get it by email. Okay, anything else? Judge, I will intend to upload that advice order to JAWS. May I approach with some self-addressed envelopes for mailing to the two parties that do not have or would you like me to mail? I can mail. Or you can certify that you're going to just do that. Absolutely. I can, I can ensure that. Letter, there's a cover letter, so if you certify that way, my JA who is hardly ever busy, um, <laughs> could save her a little time. I appreciate that. I will certify that we will not only mail, but serve all parties as identified in the order. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Is Something further? No, no, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Judge. All right.